things uh, started. So, you know, first of all, Happy New Year. Hope you had good holidays. Um, so, I mean, we're, believe it or not, we're almost like into third week of January. So this year is already starting really fast. Uh, so I'm sharing uh, the slide deck uh, or sharing my screen. So hopefully you can see it. And then I'm going to post on the chat window where the notes are supposed to be. So if you can, anyone can help with uh, uh, notes, where's the chat window? Whoops, not that. There you go. So those are the notes. If we can help during with the note taking, that'll be great. Uh, I guess without further ado, we'll get started. Um, so pretty quick uh, uh, items to start with. Uh, a couple of follow-up items. Let me thank you, George, for reminding me of the action items to follow up on. Uh, and then we've been talking about improving the core team page, so we'll just talk about where we're at. Hi, Remy, how are you? Hello, everyone. Hey. I'm good. Your background looks really cool, <laughs> <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a, a chalet. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, uh, okay, and the third item is on the hackathon. Uh, just The blog post just went out. Uh, this morning, my time in California, and then uh, the, the wanted to spend as much time as we can talking about um, uh, encouraging casual contributors to become more regular contributors like people on this call. Uh, I know that's not a, I mean, a simple topic, but just wanted to, you know, at least start brainstorming some ideas. And then if you have some time at the end, just wanted to give uh, people a reminder on on a couple of events in Brussels uh, in in starting in about three weeks. Uh, Git merge and Foz and both are kind of back to back in Brussels. Uh, so wanted to talk to you quickly about that. Um, uh, so a couple of action items uh, starting from uh, that, that we talked about last month. Uh, GitLab contribute. Uh, I think I saw a number of people posting questions on the contribute uh, uh, channel on Slack. Uh, but reminder that uh, to book your flights by the 1st of February if you haven't done so already. Uh, and then I'm not sure if we talked about this last month, but we're planning to invite some of the other contributors that are not part of the core team to the event. Uh, so we'll hopefully get to have more community members participate. Uh, so we're trying to figure out logistics in terms of uh, like a discounts that we want to provide and and um, and if they'll be able to travel. So that conversation has been going on for uh, past several weeks. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to see, I mean, we'll all get to meet uh, some of these other contributors that, that are not part of the core team. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But George, were there, was there anything else that you wanted to follow up on or I'm not sure if just wanted to remind everybody that uh, to make your travel arrangements, but no, I think that, that was it. I mean, uh, okay, that's uh, because of uh, the book, the deadline for booking flights is uh, yeah. next month, that's right. Yeah, it's uh, coming fast. Um, so, uh, I have and, a question to that. Yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead. Do we have a, do we have a list uh, of of um, of contributors which are considered to be invited? Uh, yeah, I'm compiling that list right now. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you'll probably in, in a couple of the topics, you'll probably see some of the names that we've been considering. It's it's yeah. uh, people that have been making a lot of contributions over the years. Sure. Um, so, yep. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we sent. I think I reached out to about fifteen or so people uh, in the community, uh, and then some of them, unfortunately, said they can't, they just can't. They're not available at that time frame. I mean, some of them, like one person's working on a thesis, and um, so I mean, valid valid reasons for for not being able to attend. So we started uh, outreach um, probably about a month ago in December. Um, so trying to uh, organize it there. Oh, cool. And then, yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, depending on what country you're from, uh, obviously, there's there's also a visa issue that you might have to contend with. So earlier you start working on that, the better. Um, uh, 
yeah, it's just not a pleasant thing to deal with, unfortunately. Cool. And then the next item is on the proofreaders. Uh, I think, uh, Remy, you, I think you brought this topic up a couple of months ago. Uh, so the documentation has been updated. Uh, and, in, and then you see the quotes there of like a specific item that, that I updated. And, and it, since then, I've gotten requests for new proofreaders for a couple of languages. And I basically use this, uh, applied this rule. Um, I mean, I may have pinged some of you to, to uh, approve somebody as a proofreader. Uh, so that's been working well so far. Um, and, uh, and yes, and then uh, the GitLab merchandise or swag has been sent out to all the proofreaders. So uh, recognition has been sent out. And uh, I'm not sure if you saw uh, early last week, I think it was, I posted a blog post uh, trying to encourage people to contribute translation to GitLab. Um, so hopefully we'll see some more activities um, in a number of languages. So. Cool. That's great. Thank right. you. Oh, right, you bet. Nice. So. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, like like one of the hidden gems at GitLab, I think, like people don't realize this is all basically done by community. Uh, and uh, I mean, ironically, I mean, interestingly, one of the questions I got on Twitter after I posted that blog was what about documentation, which is a bigger problem, right? I mean, that's not as easy to do versus um, uh, translating our UI. Um, so I, uh, I mean, there was an existing issue that, I mean, that started two years ago. That we don't have a short-term solution for that, but um, that was, um, you know, one question I got following following the blog post. Cool. Any other questions on this, or uh, George, does that like answer some of the questions you had on proofreaders? But... Um, no. The yeah. only point was uh, that yeah. uh, adding a header on the top of the proofreader, proofreader section to. Uh -huh to explain uh, how to become and just be, it's uh, a lower in this section, but uh, it's okay, it's, as we can leave it as okay. it is now, for now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, feel feel free to, uh, I it's mean. Minor, yes. Yeah, yeah, ping me and see if anything needs to be tweaked or you can even make the tweak yourself, right? So on the documentation, but cool. Okay, uh, so moving right along, uh, the core team page layout, uh, I think, I mean, the only person that have uh, added yourself to the team page is probably you, George, and Jacopo, so Robert and Hannes, if you can uh, submit an MR, uh, basically to add your photo and uh, your location, I believe. Uh, those are the two entries that you need to, to add in the MR. Uh, it should be described in the issue there, but if you have any questions, just... Uh, just ping me or reach out to me. You can basically use the same photo that you that we have in our current uh, core team page, but uh, I think only two people are uh, two people from the core yep. team are headed to the page. So, sure. Yeah. Uh, question uh, to that: uh, Should we remove ourselves from the from the um, from the uh, old core page? No, no, you don't need to. Well, I'll clean that up later on once once everybody's added to the team page. So just just um, just uh, worry about the adding to the team yeah. page, and I'll I'll worry about the other other uh, older page that we're trying to remove or or redo cool. here. So yep. Cool. Yep. And I think somebody else had a had a question. I don't know if that was Hannes or or you, George. Uh, no, I didn't have a question. Uh, okay. Cool. Yep. I mean, let me know if you have any questions. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, and in on the second bullet, in terms of updating the layout, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was last week. Uh, I think George, you were part of the conversation. I ping Yarek and and Luke on on the on the Slack channel. Um, so I guess uh, I, I I mean I. I I, I guess if we need to, we can open an issue on www.gitlab.com. But um, I mean, unfortunately, this is one of the things that got put in the backlog, I guess. But uh, George, I guess it's up to us to kind of submit an MR to move forward on the uh, on the shorter version of, of your proposal. So yes, probably yes. Yeah. The only the, the two things that uh, I have in mind is that uh, I haven't done much work with middleman and. Uh, Right. The second one is that uh, having the alumni core team 
uh, should remove all the data in the team uh, .yaml or just right. use a different file. I'm not sure, but yeah. maybe we can open an MR and discuss on it. Uh, right. Yeah, I think I, I think I may have commented on it on the alumni page. I think we just we can just keep it in a separate page. Um, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's. I mean, I almost feel like it's just too much work to take tack, tackle both of them. Um, I'm not sure but, about the optimal yeah. way. Yeah. Maybe Yarek knows better, but uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, so at least they're aware of it. I think they were just, you know, they probably didn't notice that we we're mentioning them in our issue. Um, so, but at least, um, we, you know, we got their attention. So hopefully we can ping them if we need to, but I think we can move forward. So cool. Okay. Uh, anything else on this or uh, move on? Oh, cool. all right. On the hackathon, uh, so the the blog posts got posted this morning. Uh, so the next one is uh, about a month from now. So February 12th and 13th, I believe this is Tuesday and Wednesday of that week. Um, and one of the new uh, twists that, or, or new thing that we're gonna try out on this hackathon is uh, I'm gonna meet with the product team tomorrow. Uh, and I've, I've been meeting with some of the product managers over the past couple of months. Uh, what I wanna try to do is I mean, I've been very happy with the number of MRs that have been coming in during the hackathons. Uh, but what I also wanted to do was to encourage uh, on some of the issues that are important to our product team members. So to highlight some of the issues. Uh, so as an experiment, we're just gonna try out like one from like each of the product teams, like one from manage, one from secure, one from verify as an example, and to highlight some of the issues that we wanna encourage community members to work on. And if anybody works on those MRs, they'll get an extra prize uh, as as uh, as a uh, as an incentive. Uh, so we're going to try that out and then see how that works out. And we might increase the number at the future hackathons, or or even like do this like year round, like not even wait until hackathon, but highlight some of the specific issues, and encourage people to work on them, almost like a contest. Um, so the specific issues and what those will be, uh, I'll work with the product managers over the next couple of weeks and I'll, we'll start publicizing them on, on the hackathon page. So that's something, um, uh, slightly different we're trying to do. So. Um, a question that can you compile this list very soon? Because it would be cool that uh, if, if contributors have this, um, uh, notice issues already ahead of the hackathon to start, start getting yeah. into the, yeah. I mean, the, my goal is to basically finalize this list or at least start co compiling the list on, on the hackathon page in the next couple yeah. of weeks and, and start yeah. advertising them. And then, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I assume a lot of these things won't necessarily be, tr be trivial. Uh, so it'll require some planning and right. for people to start working on them. So yeah, I mean, the, the, the goal is to definitely publicize this by hopefully by the end of the month, so people know what mm -hmm. what what those special issues are. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, good good feedback though. Uh, yeah, I don't want to publicize it like on the morning of when the hackathon starts and people are scrambling. So that would not be very successful. So, yeah, yeah. cool. So let me make a note of that. Okay, cool. And uh, obviously looking forward to uh, everybody participating. And, and like I said, the numbers have been great. Uh, I think, uh, I don't remember the exact number, what the exact numbers were for the, for the last one in November. I think we got over 60 MRs across different products and you know, definitely want to see a repeat of that, but also want to have, uh, you know, encourage people to work on specific items that, that you know, product, uh, manager feel are important so you mentioned that the numbers are great um, I mean have you're comparing that to like normal numbers right not just in general uh, yeah I mean I'm like specifically comparing uh, I mean if you, if you look at like the numbers for like 11.6 release right I mean there's like a significant bump uh, in in terms of community contributions and and a lot of that had to do with uh, I mean I think 
uh, hackathon was a big factor. Uh, so you definitely see a see a bump. Uh, and then I think we saw the same thing at, at the first hackathon in September. So, and then the numbers, like even between the first two hackathon, there was like a significant increase. I think it almost like we tripled the number of MRs from the first hackathon to the next. Um, so I'm not sure, Ben, if that answers your question, but. Yeah, no, I mean, it does. I just know that um, a lot of time it's a lot of the same people submitting stuff but anyway yeah uh, no we actually for for the second hackathon we had a lot of first-time contributors i don't have the number like in in front of me um uh, but i i think there were, i mean i there were a lot of mrs that came from like people i i didn't like notice before um so uh, I mean, it, it's it's obviously you know I mean, it's hard to quantify but I mean the I do feel like the words getting out which is nice so okay cool so the other uh, topic that I wanted to go over uh, and uh, um, it won't necessarily be a structured conversation, uh, but I pulled out some stats and I have a couple of links here that people can look at. Uh, in, I mean, 2018, we had, I think, like over 430, like, community members that are submitting MRs across, like, different projects. This includes, like, GDK, uh, like, runners, um, you know, CEE, and et cetera. Um, so, I mean, that number in and of itself sounds um, sounds pretty nice, but if you look at people who've done like more than five merge requests, uh, there are only like 33 of them. It's like less than 10 percent. And then uh, I can show you this table uh, that which I added a link to. Uh, so I compiled a like a list of people from 2016 to 2018. I mean, sorry, like some of these may be hard to see because I I use some highlights to delineate like levels of contributions um, um, and I kind of pick like number five uh, and be like based on what I what I was looking at here uh, from 2016 to 2018 if you look at like a heavy contributors either a lot of these people are either already on the core team or like they're part of GitLab like people like Vinny right who was like a top contributor in 2016 um, so, and, but if you look at the rest, there's like a significant drop off from um, people, like if you look at like people in like, I mean, um, like, like red or like a blue color, there's, there's like a, uh, like a significant number of MRs, like probably in the order of like a two or three a month, like people are getting like their MRs merged. And then after that, there's a pretty significant drop off. Uh, and I think 2018, I mean, this, this shows you like this is sort of a cutoff where people had like five MRs and then there are a lot of people that had like a two or three the, the entire year. Um, so I, I kind of picked a number uh, and I, I think that was in, in response to Ten uh, Takuya's question, um, you know, you know, what am I defining as like casual versus like regular? And when I looked at that, I, I thought five was like somewhat reasonable um, as well. Cause I mean, if you look at five or six, that, that translates to roughly like one merge MR like every other month. Uh, and once you go beyond that, it's, it's um, uh, I mean, it's, uh, so if you're contributing like more than like one every other month, that, that translates to about five or six. Um, so I uh, thought that was sort of a reasonable number to start with. Um, um, so let me just pause there and, and see if you, any of you have any questions or comments or, or thoughts on that, but, uh, and then we can talk about the second bullet item in terms of like, how do we encourage like some of the more casual contributors, but, uh, I don't know if you all have any thoughts or, or feedback. Uh, um, just to understand what. Uh, what's the motivation be behind motivating them to contribute more, to have a more stable core team? Uh, I mean, that's one of them. Uh, I mean, it's not necessarily to increase the, uh, 
increase the size of the core team necessarily, but uh, so I, I think one of the things that I tried to do when I started about six months ago is to basically, you know, create a, a like a large funnel at the top. Like if you if you think of this as in terms of almost like a sales funnel, we want to raise awareness and have as many people as possible like contribute to GitLab. Um, so I mean that was step one. The next step is to have a lot of these you know people who started contributing and to uh, I want to encourage them to contribute on a regular basis. Uh, so that we have a like a large pool of people that are uh, like reliably contributing on a regular basis. Like if if these numbers like fluctuate too much, uh, like you know we have a lot of people that contribute like a couple of MRs this year and then disappear like next year. Then uh, I'm not sure if we can say we have a healthy community uh, to start with, or we have a reliable. Uh, like a community resource that we can we can reach out to uh, in terms of not just in terms of like code, but also in terms of feedback and their 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 uh, uh, and their and their feedback in terms of how how GitLab is working. Um, but for but for the small contributions, couldn't it just be that there are personal reasons for not contributing anymore? Like yeah, I mean there'll there'll always be drop offs. Like I don't anticipate that like everybody will stick around with with the GitLab project for, for you know for, for the long term. Um, but you know just you know once you raise awareness, I think the next step you know you know naturally is to have like a stable core group of people that are. Uh, that are contributing to GitLab, uh, and you know, if you see this number, I mean, it's not necessarily science, like you know, necessarily organized or scientific. Uh, I mean, the number is like a growing slightly from year over year. Like in terms of number of people that are contributed, like more than five, it went from like 18 one year to about 20 the next year, and then to like 25 uh, or or 33. Um, but yeah, so it's it's definitely happening, but I like to see this like accelerate even even further. I guess that's another thing. But yeah. so the yeah. you, you want to raise the number of people or the number of contributions per person? I'm not quite uh, sure. I mean, so what I like to do, I mean, you 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 guys can tell me if this is uh, if you don't think this is the right thing. I like to increase the number of people that are contributing five or more per year. Uh, I mean, so I'm, I'll just make up a number. We had 33 last year. Like, I'd love to get up to like 50 as an example by end of 2019, right? And, uh, and then what, what each of those people are like individual contributing, whether it's five or like, you know, like 200, like George did last year. But it's, I'm not sure if that's as important, um, but I like to have a more core base of people that are, that are contributing on a, on a regular basis. So. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, to, to do that, I mean, it sounds like more science might need to go behind this, right? Like, a lot of it is just probably little tiny things that, you know, you can get a five by just contributing almost a little small thing. But mm -hmm. it could also be that someone else has five because after five, they just were so frustrated with how long it took them to get stuff merged that they just stopped bothering. Right. Yeah, I mean that's a possibility. I mean, I like I've done a sort of a cursory review of the of the data that we have, uh, and then you know I I obviously haven't seen like after five like what happened like did they reach five by July and they got frustrated after that or um, or was there another reason? Um, but I mean one of the things where I guess we're sort of jumping on to the the next topic here, um, you know how do we actually do this? I mean, one of the things that, that I started uh, talking to David about was uh, do something like a badging of, of contributor, of community contributors. Like if you do, like, um, again, just I'm using these numbers as an example. If you do more than 10 MRs merged per year, then you get like, you know, you get, you get like a silver star, right? And then if you have more than 50, then you get a gold star. Uh, if you have more than 100, then you're you're like a platinum. So there'll be like a labeling or badging of like contributors to to recognize like regular contributions. Uh, I don't know if there will be enough um, to like persuade people to do that. I mean, obviously we'll have to do other things like Ben, you were talking about like making it really easy to have people regularly contribute. Um, but 
I mean, some of the recognition of, of like the work that's being done outside of core, core team membership might be something like worth visiting. Uh, that's one of the things that I, that I thought about, but um, I don't know if you guys, uh, people on this call have other thoughts or, or comments on that. that. Yeah. I mean, the, the point system is, is interesting, although it quickly gets yeah. complicated. I mean, if you, you're probably familiar with like Google Maps point system, right? They assign yeah. the value to every different type of contribution and, and, you know, they give prizes based on points and whatnot. So mm -hmm. I think that it could be interesting, but it might take a while and quite a bit of work to actually make it uh, pay off. Yeah. I mean, I also don't want to make it like really complicated. I don't, I don't want people to have like a advanced degree in statistics to figure out like, how do I become like a, you know, reach the goal uh, label, uh, for example, I want to make it like relatively simple. But uh, if you've seen something that's, uh, that you thought was cool in different communities, I mean, please, please let me know. Uh, but, you know, I haven't thought like much beyond what I, what I just described. Um, but Robert, did you have a comment or a question? It could just be background noise, I guess, but did, uh, do, do we try to contact, uh, some of the contributors on that list? Uh, uh, yes, I did actually. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, sorry. Go ahead, Hannes. What, what did they say? Uh, why is it contributed or uh, why they stopped contributing after five yeah. Uh, hours? Yeah, I mean, I haven't like necessarily seen anybody who stopped, uh, but one person that you probably notice here that's been contributing over the past three years is this person here is uh, Semyon Pupkov. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly. And I'm actually gonna feature him on a blog, the next this month's developer blog. And um, uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think I've seen that name before, but I didn't realize his contribution went as far back as like, I think it was like 8.6, uh, 8 like GitLab 8.6, like a long time ago. And he's been doing it on a very regular basis. Uh, and I, also when I reached out to some of the other people for, for inviting them to GitLab contribute, uh, uh, like I can't find their names here. I mean, there are like, um, like this person here, Jasper, I mean, this person does like enormous amount of work, just, just doing like a lot of, um, like, like housekeeping work for like Ruby work. Right. Basically. And, uh, and he just like very reliable on a consistent basis. Um, and I mean, definitely want to see like more of those people and, but I mean, I think Hannes and, and Ben, you make a good point. I should probably also look at people like, uh, some of the people who dropped off for whatever reason, I should probably find out why. Uh, if they, for some reason, if they contributed in 2016 and 17 and we didn't see them in 2018, I think that's an uh, interesting exercise to do. Cool. Might also be interesting uh, just to kind of get an average how long it took for them to get the MR merged over the years to see if you're improving the time there or if you if you're uh, getting worse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been looking at like a time to merge, like the median number over the releases, but I sh have only looked at like numbers for, I think, Q3 and Q4, I believe, last year. But yeah, I can definitely take a look at uh, earlier periods and, and, and see if I'm seeing different trends or trends that are not necessarily good. But... Yeah, also uh, not just... Uh doing do that for the uh, for all contributors about mm -hmm. uh, specific to the persons on that list I mean yeah so for example if you have uh, I don't know JD Bean with six contribute uh, contributions mm -hmm. uh, this year it would be interesting to see if uh, what this uh, time to merge was right yeah Okay. Yeah, I can Just definitely if we, if we can see a trend in from right. person to person there. Yeah. Right. 
I also feel that uh, splitting that number by front end and back end makes sense because my impression is that uh, that back end merge requests get reviewed a bit faster than front end merge requests. And but I don't have numbers to mm -hmm. um, to support that claim. So maybe we would need to look at specific um, specific reviews more. I'm not sure if that's too much work, though. To, to yeah, those. I mean, I'll that, as, actually that's an interesting one. Um, like I was think, also thinking like documentation because uh, I got pinged by somebody on the documentation team on like if if there are like certain bottlenecks on on documentation MRs. Uh, but yeah, I'll I'll see what I can do. I think I can probably do some queries on on the Biturja dashboard. I mean, I won't I may not be necessarily able to do this in the next week or so, but uh, hopefully before the next meeting, I can take a look at some data. But... Cool. So just one last question. Is this just on, were these numbers just from GitLab CE or this also? Yeah, I mean, this, this is specifically for CE and EE. Uh, I wanted to make the exercise simpler. Uh, so I just focused on the two yeah. products, but yeah, I could probably look at other products as well. I just know, like, for example, I mean, I, I get the feeling that I've contributed more to, to Omnibus, but maybe that's not accurate. But anyway, I just, mm -hmm. uh, I think there's certain cases where some people might be active in Omnibus, but not the code right. base. Um, yeah. Right. But someone like me, I, I do a lot with running GitLab, not as much with, you know, developing GitLab. So I mm -hmm. tend to go there more. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, like reviews are done uh, quicker on CE and EE as an example. But uh, yeah, we s just started pulling data on other products as well. Uh, if you go to Baturgia, so I don't know if you can. Yeah, so I'm pulling data for like GDK. I don't know if Omnibus is on here. I could double check. Uh, yeah, Omnibus is there. So. Uh, Cool. Yeah, I can take a look at other products. Uh, shouldn't be that difficult to do. You just need to uh, find the time. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, thanks for your questions and, and, and comments. This is definitely helpful. Uh, hopefully I could like report back on this like next month or like uh, on the, on like, um, uh, on the issue uh, for this meeting. But uh, yeah, if you have any other thoughts or feedback uh, beyond what we're able to discuss today, please let me know. Cool. And last item. Uh, so for for people, I, I think I reached out to you, Hannes, about specifically about FOSDAM. I mean, uh, I think some of you live relatively close to Brussels, at least uh, are able to get on the train. Uh, so there are two events back to back. Uh, so Git Merge and FOSDAM. I mean, FOSDAM's always been in Brussels and Git Merge uh, just uh, is happening like right before that in, in Brussels. Uh, and Git Merge, where GitLab is uh, sponsoring the event, and there are a limited number of passes available that I can give out to community members. Uh, so, George, I'm still trying to get confirmation on. I assume the passes are good for both, like uh, day one and day two. Uh, the main event is February 1st, and, and 31st, I, I believe, is like a contributor summit plus like a number of workshops that are there are happening on on Thursday. Um, George, if you're interested in the past, just let me know. I can give you the code so you can uh, register for free. Uh, I don't think it's that expensive of an event anyways. It's, it's about 150 euros for both days. But um, I mean, if you don't have to pay for it, why, why should you? So uh, please, I think I got about uh, 12 passes for community members. And I, I gave away two to a um, couple of people. Um, but George, like if you're interested, just uh, me on Slack and I can okay, give you the right. code. Yep. So, and then there are a lot, there's a couple of discussions, uh, some discussions that are happening on the Slack channel if you're interested in seeing it. And and the FOSAM follows like right after, like on Saturday and Sunday, we'll have a stand. Uh, and FOSAM, that's always been a free event. Like you don't even need to register, you just show up. 
at, at the university. Um, so, I mean, George, if you're there for Git Merge, if you want to stick around for like another day or so, um, I mean, we'll love to have you at our stand too. Like, I'll, we'll make you work. But, uh, uh, but it'll be good to talk to community members there. And uh, I mean, um, uh, uh, David's coming over from Cologne. And if others are interested in, in joining us, just join either one of the channels and, and, and uh, look forward to seeing you there if you can make it. So, cool. Uh, that's all I had. Uh, got about uh, uh, 10 minutes left if there are any other topics that people want to discuss. Uh, yeah, I have one. Yeah. Um, I noticed that currently, uh, if you want to contribute to the GitLab runner, uh, it's pretty hard because the uh, team is currently overwhelmed and mm -hmm. it takes a very long time to get even initial feedback on the uh, MRs because I think there are only three people or something like that that can even review them on GitLab. Okay. Um, so I've, I found one that didn't receive any feedbacks for like seven months or something like that. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if we can do something to help there uh, or if the team needs to be bigger for uh, that to improve. But currently, uh, it's really hard to get the merge requests that are there merged. Okay. Simply because the review doesn't happen because nobody has the time. Mm, okay. Could you like a post that like an MR, uh, like on the Slack channel for the core team, and like, uh, so, yeah. yeah, or yeah, you can even do I it on the chat it. here. But let's see. Um... Yeah, I'm not even sure if I remember who the maintainers are for. Uh, that should be, I think. Camille, Thomas, uh, uh, okay. Alessio. Oops, sorry. So just that's just oh, wow. one example, but yeah, he opened it a year ago, received okay. feedback after a month or two to rebase it. Right. So it took, took a little while, so I count from there like seven months without okay. getting anything. Yeah, and I think uh, you chimed in like three weeks ago too, it looks like. Yeah. But uh yeah, I don't know, like Remy or Vinny, do you have any other suggestions or like not really because if people are not I mean if people internally are not aware of a project and don't have expertise, yeah. um I I see how how people for example me are not um comfortable with reviewing, reviewing it. Um, so mm -hmm. having people added to the team who have knowledge uh, in that area sounds like a good plan to me if we can somehow manage that. I'm, I'm not sure what a good strategy that would be. <clears throat> yeah. But if we, I mean, if we want community contributions, I guess that's the price that we have to pay if, uh, to, to add more people that have capacity. Yeah. Right. I mean, at least like the last feedback, you know, before Christmas was that, you know, try to review this before by by mid January, but we'll see. I guess, you know, I can just do another ping like next week to make sure that this is on the top of his list. But I don't know. I think Remy, were you about to say something? But no, I was uh, yeah. saying the same. Um, yeah, you know, that we need more people that that have the expertise to uh, to review. Right. Okay. So m maybe what we can do is uh, because we already have people with Go expertise uh, right. in other teams, so maybe we can try to. You know what? Uh, I actually met sense. somebody who just started today. He knows Go really well, so maybe. <laughs> nice. <laughs> maybe I'll forward this on to him. Like, uh, I mean, he got us. I I got assigned as his buddy, and then we were talking, and then he said he's he joined the Giddily team, and he loves Go, and so, all right, cool. I I'd be happy to do that. So, yeah. Also, thing the, the other thing is that uh, currently the uh, 
bot is not active for the GitLab runner, so new MRs are not labeled at, uh, as community contribution automatically. There is yeah. an issue about that. Uh, again, it has to do with, uh, with the fact that there are not enough people on the team to handle the uh, load of notifications that the bot produces by default. So currently, yeah, my suggestion was just to enable the automatic labeling and without notifications for now. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. It goes back to the, the last issue that we talked about. Like, in some cases, stuff is a little bit too focused on the code base when it comes to community contributions and automation stuff. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thanks for that, Hannes. Uh, cool. All right, any other topics? All right, I, I guess we can wrap up four minutes early. Uh, once again, happy 2019, and I'll talk to you all again soon. Thank you. Have a Have good a nice day in year. Europe. Thank you. Bye. Have a good Have day. A nice day.